Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome back to this new series where we will try to create an employee management system with a salary. So I have created a new Laravel empty project and you need to create an empty project for all of this tutorial. It's the model and the migration. So let's start, let's go to our terminal and try to create a model with the terminal. Here we create a new model by typing php artisan make model and the model first, the first model name will be department and it will permit us to, to manage the department of the employee. So let's try to create this model and add the dash m to create to associate immigration to this model. So now that this model has been created, let's create a new, the next model and the next model will be the employee. So let's come here and replace department with employee. And now that we create the second model, let's create the next one, the last one model, the last model for now, and the last model will be salary because we will manage the salary too. Now that all three models are created, let's fill the three model. And for fill the model, we need to go to database in the, in the main structure, click on database migration, and let's give more space to see with migration name and open create department migration. And here for the department, we need to give to provide a string in string for under the name of the department. And let's say the colon will be name. And let's say that the max length of this colon will be 255. And let's say that this colon can be no label. Okay, let's let it like this. So we have a department table and only one feed with name. And we have limited the character to 255. So let's do the same for the employee table. For the employee table, we need to provide some information such as the name and the, the first name, the last name, the contact, the email, and the hour price. So let's say we have some fee to, to get the first name of the employee and one for the last name and one for the email. So let's duplicate this. This will be last name. And the next field will be email. And this will be phone too. And for the phone, you can limit it as 25 character. And for the email, let's say this one is good. And for the first name and last name, let's leave like this. So let's say so again, we have this table and we will have the, a day price for know how many we buy the employee when the day end. And for the day price, let's say that is integer. Because if the days come, start and end, we need to know that this employee is paid to $2,200 per, per, per day. So this is our employee table. We have the first name, the last name, the email, the phone, and the day price. And let's add a new colon for the avatar. So let's say that is a string too. And we say that is the avatar or picture. So let's say that we prefer picture. Or let's leave avatar. Avatar is maybe better. And let's say that by default, this feed can be no label. Okay, now let's switch the salary table. And for the salary table, we need just to provide the employee ID and we need to provide a foreign K for the employee ID. So the employee ID. And we will give the total, the total that the month total. So one for the month total. And let's copy this line and come back here on the salary table and let's add this. And for add this, let's say that we will have a foreign K, it will be employee ID and it will be ID references on employees table. Okay, and we need to rename this field to, to employee ID. Okay, this will be a foreign K for the specific for the design employee for one specific employee. We need to know which employee and how much we need to pay this employee when the month met. And after adding this foreign K, we need to add a new a new column. Let's say that it will be this time an integer and it will be the month total. 
value remove the month total that we need to pay to this employee and this value uh, or this two value will need to be this two value need to be unique and they will be calculated automatically when we will, we will register a new employee so later we will add some some unique constraint to this to this model but now we will leave it at this like this we, we need to we will leave it like this so let's copy this foreign key constraint that we add here and on the employee table let's add this foreign key constraint because one employee need to go to one specific department okay now that we send this foreign key constraint on the employee table we need to add the department as a foreign key because one employee need to go to one department so here when we have where we had employee id we need to replace with department id okay it's department so we need to replace here to the department department id and the table will be department and the model name is department so we need to add some s is department table okay let's start with a free a free migration that we create but before running the migration let's go to users table and check if we need to verify something we have the name the email and the password and this field this table will be used for log the user so we will use this users table like a admin table because we will use this table to log people to the add to the administration to manage the employee management system okay now that all of this is correct let's come back to php admin and create a new database so let me create a database and we call it nd employee management and let's try to run this 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 query and we need to provide the underscore instead of this one so let's provide some underscore and click on execute again and now we will have this database created and the employee management and let's go to laravel and open the env file so this env file and where we have a database let's replace laravel so the database section So the db database section let's replace for laravel with this new database that we've created so the name is nd employee management so let's save this now and let's go to the console and try to to execute all of this migration that we've created so let's see php artisan migrate so we will get this error because it said that the key is too long for this field so for fix this this one we need to go to the app service provider and on the boot method we need to provide a new a specific configuration let's call here the schema and let's call the default string length and let's say that is this one and when we add this to the service provider we can now try to rerun the migration and now if we say use that with some table are, are already exists so for fix this we need to refresh all the migration so let's add the fresh condition to the migration command and let's try to rename in and now that when we execute all of this we, we see that all table are created and we can check this on the may admin where we'll see all of us all of the table that we've had so we have a department table created and we have all of the table that we create so now that we create the basic the next step to do is to start the application by creating the login form for permit the administration administrator to log to the account to start managing the employee the employee system so hope you like this part and we will meet again in the, last, in the next part.